What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another conference championship recap, and we're ending it off with the SWAC championship that went down this Saturday afternoon, and we had Jackson State pulling out the 27-10 to win over Prairie View A&M, which gave Coach Deion Sanders and Jackson State you know, their first SWAC title under Coach Sanders and their first one since 2007. So, I mean, it's been a long time coming for Jackson State. And listen, I don't think anybody saw it coming the way it did this weekend. We'll get into that. But the first overall takeaways is or, or are uh, it, one Jackson State man completes an undefeated SWAC season. And with how competitive this conference has been, with how competitive a lot of these teams have been, and how long it's been since Jackson State has been at the top, it's such an impressive feat. And only Coach Prom's second season, technically, his first season, or his second season in his first year, we'll call it, for him to put together, even after putting together the number one FCS class, for him to come in and win the SWAC title, no blemishes on his record in the SWAC. That really speaks to what he's building at Jackson State and what type of team he has. Now, the way they won this weekend, let's get to the, some takeaways from the game. If you would have given me the stat line for Jackson State this weekend, if you would have given me that on Friday when my preview dropped, I would have told you, pray if you probably pulls the upset. I'm going to be completely honest with you, man. Only 233 total yards, less than 150 yards rushing, less than 80, uh, less than 85 yards passing, and you also got a turnover, and you were three for 12 on third down. I would have said, man, Prairie View's got a great chance to win this game, especially if you would have told me Shador Sanders went eight for 16, 85 yards, a touchdown, and a pick. That's by far his worst performance of the year, and all year this team has relied on Shador Sanders to carry them through. I would have said, man, Prairie View's probably got this game. I'm going to be completely honest with y'all. But I thought this, this win particularly answered the final question I had about Jackson State. And so let me tell you what that was. Coming into the game, week after week, we saw Shador, Shador Sanders win games without a running attack and without any offensive line help. It was the defense. It's Shador Sanders making play after play after play, throwing to Malachi Wadman, Keith Corbin, you know, whichever wide receiver you want to single out. But this weekend was a lot different. Shador did not have his best game. Kind of bound to happen, man. He's had an outstanding freshman year. And for him to have an unblemished first season probably wasn't the, you know, wasn't very likely. So we're not going to tear him up about one bad game. But let's give a shout out to Jackson State to finding a way to win regardless. Peyton Pickett, man, probably Honestly, the, the offensive MVP for Jackson State this weekend, 107 yards, over five and a half yards per carry, and a touchdown this weekend. I think Peyton Pickett was by far the MVP of the game. This is the first game, I think, all season long, you could say, Shador Sanders wasn't the reason that Jackson State's offense found a way to pull this one out. This is the first game probably all year. Maybe the fan view game, you give the defense a lot of credit in that one. But this is the first game where I think you say Shador Sanders didn't pull this team up. The offensive line did a solid job in run blocking at times. Their pass block is atrocious. We won't even get into that. Listen, Jason Dumas ate that, ate the front, ate the defensive front up or the offensive front up. I mean, they have problems at guard center guard spot. But Peyton Pickett, Santi Marshall had a solid game, 50 yards rushing. And the fact that Jackson State had no receivers over two catches, only eight total pass completions all game, and still found a way to win a game by multiple scores. I don't think people are get, are putting that in perspective. Now, it wasn't the best game for Jackson State, but they still find a way to win by 17 points, guys. So Jackson State can play they're arguably one of their worst games of the year and still win by that. Speaks to not only this team, but... I want to give the defense and Dennis Sturman all the credit in the world. The defensive performance this weekend was really what separated Jack State from the rest of the SWAC all year long. They held Prairie View to less than 230 total yards, four for 15 on third downs, forced five turnovers, and, I mean, held one of the top offenses in the SWAC to arguably their worst output of the season. Man, listen, they Jawan passed shut down. Uh, 
the running game shut down. I mean, there was nothing on the ground for the Demi and Brooks in that rushing attack. Wide receivers, Jalen Howard, uh, Trey John Spiller shut down. So you got to give Jackson a lot of credit. James Houston made his impact off the edge, got a pick six. And the secondary at times, especially at the corner spot, found ways to make plays, man. Nugget Warren shut down on his side, like always. And the linebackers, man. Keontae, Keontae Hampton, not being a first team All American, really was exemplified this weekend. The fact that he did not make first team is a is a criminal offense for the SWAC voters. Whoever voted for that needs to be called out because if you didn't have one on your first team ballot, I need to see you and I need to talk to you because Keontae Hampton is a first team SWAC All American in my book by far. Now I'm going to give Coach Prom and this Jack State team a lot of credit. Like I said, they won a game that if you, that typically most teams would have lost if you didn't play, if you played like this against anybody else. So they found a way to win even without doing what they did best. Now for Prairie View on the flip side, man, what went wrong for them? Everything. That's the simple answer, but especially the passing attack. Jawan Pass went six for 19, 80 yards passing and three interceptions, no touchdowns. That cannot happen. I mean, Jawan Pass arguably had the worst performance of his entire career this weekend, and he just seemed shook from the, shook from the the first snap. You know, Jackson State was playing in their backfield on that front set in terms of the front seven. He looked overwhelmed by some of the defensive fronts they were giving him, and I think it affected his rhythm and his decision making. Like some of those interceptions were just, where were you throwing it? What were you thinking? So for me, I feel like Dennis Sturman and the Jack State defense did a great job at confusing Juwan Pass, making him feel uncomfortable, and therefore it really affected how he played. Then they put in, you know, the backups with Tra- uh, I believe it was Trazon uh, Conley, I believe was his last name, was the backup. Three for seven, 15 yards. Didn't do any better. I mean, Jackson State secondary deserves a lot of credit, and it plays off their front seven so well. And then on top of that, they only averaged 2.6 yards per carry. And you got to look at Jackson State and say they played such an outstanding game on the defensive side of the ball. I thought this arguably, guys, was argue, was probably their best performance of the year in terms of the defensive side of the ball. I know Prairie View was banged up. I know they are missing one of their top wide receivers. But they were a top five, top three offense all season long in the SWAC. And they absolutely embarrassed them this weekend. And if Shador Sanders would have had his typical game passing or Wadman or Rucker had their typical day receiving, I think this could have gotten extremely out of hand, extremely quickly for Prairie View. But overall, man, the, the takeaways from the game before we get into some other storylines, one, Shador Sanders finally had his freshman moment, got that one out of the way. But Jack State still found a way to overcome that. Peyton Pickett steps up in the biggest moment after being hated on all season long after being overlooked down the stretch. He finally has his, you know, in the last game of the season, has his Jackson State, you know, historic moment. The defense, of course, always playing electric. James Houston making an impact. Keontae Hampton, Aubrey Miller, Nugget Warren out the corner spot. They all had a big game. And also Cam at the safety spot is a problem as well. So all of these guys, this are big shout outs. And for Prairie View, it's really a season of what ifs. You know, what if they get AM early in the season and don't go into that Mississippi Valley game with a bunch of injuries? What happens if they pull out that Alcorn game? Does he give them some positive momentum? There's going to be a lot of question marks about how this season ended for Prairie View. Now, you'll see the topic. Coach Prime backs up his spring promise. He told everybody, I will see you guys in the fall. Uh, just wait till in the fall. You're getting me now. But wait till I get my players in. Wait till these guys are eligible, and I'll see y'all in the fall season. And people forget he was hired in the fall. The season gets postponed, so he only had a handful of months to really prepare. Goes into the spring season, has some struggles early, but Shador, Shiloh, a bunch of these transfers weren't even eligible. But now he comes into now he comes into the fall, and here he is, undefeated SWAC season, beating almost every single team in the SWAC, and it really and truly making a giant statement this year, man, for, and a lot of people, there's a lot of channels that have said, if he wins the SWAC this year, things could get ugly for SWAC teams. And the biggest thing for me now, moving forward with with Coach Prom's promise is, 
who is going to improve enough to get them in the ball? And that's the question I have for all of y'all. And I really want y'all to comment. You know, I don't do a lot of I don't do a lot of live stream recaps, but I do want y'all to comment. Who gets them in the fall? What team has one the foundation and two the ability to go out and recruit at a high level where they can be ready to get them? The only team I can see maybe even making a run at them next year right now is FAMU, and they have to get a quarterback. And they could maybe make that game interesting. But for me, outside of that, I just don't see anyone right now who is ready to reload and strike again. Alcorn is going to lose a lot of key pieces. How does Fred McNair rebound there? You know, Miss, uh, you know Valley's always a tough out, but until they, they get some real talent in there, and especially at the QB spot and some of the playmaker spots on the defense, I have questions about if they can pull that one out, especially with them having to come to the vet. Um, you know, you look at, I mean, who else you want to put Alabama AM losing a and losing losing a quill glass, losing um, a bunch of their wide receivers, one to the transfer portal who just went to Bowling Green. Are they going to be able to reload and challenge Jackson State next year? And then Alabama State is the new head coach who's able to come in and recruit and find a quarterback and find some offensive consistency to go along with that defense. Those are all questions that have to be answered this all season. But until now, man, Coach Prom lived up to his spring promise by saying, "We'll see y'all in the fall," and he goes undefeated in the SWAC and only his, you know, second his second season, his first full season. So for me, I think this served as a wake up notice for a lot of the rest of, for the rest of the SWAC at least to say we got to step our game up, or or if we let them get on a roll, if Jackson State wins it next year, I think it's going to get real interesting to see how the rest of the SWAC keeps up with Jackson State moving forward now looking ahead to the celebration ball that's the last topic we'll cover here we have south carolina state facing jackson state in atlanta jane uh, uh december 18th in the mercedes-benz stadium listen i know tickets are almost sold out so if you're going to be down in atlanta you need to buy your tickets now you need to go ahead and get your hotels and everything and also if you're not going make sure to tune in let's drive up the ratings it's on abc i believe on, de- on December 18th, so the higher the ratings, the better. I know last the last Celebration Bowl, it was up over, uh, like, I believe it was up over a million or so views, over a million and a half, so we got to get that up as well. But listen, this is going to be an interesting matchup, but for me, I still think Jack State has an extreme advantage in this one. This is a team that got blown out by FAMU, a team that struggled with Bethune-Cookman, and a team that really doesn't match up very well with Jackson State. Now, the coaching staff is very strong up there at South Carolina State, but the MEAC was very, very depleted this year, and they only come out at a 6-5 and five record. And the number one thing I, I think is going to be tested with Jackson State is can you not overlook them? If Jackson State overlooks them, they might have a chance, but I just can't imagine Coach Prom having his team not coming into the Celebration Bowl fired up and ready to play. Now, the one thing I do want to see is how did Kobe Durant faces some of these wide receivers? Can he stop a Malachi Wami? Can he stop a Keith Corbin? Can he stop a Trevante Rucker? I think that's going to probably be the biggest matchup for me to watch. And then also, how does Jackson State's defense fare against that offense? Fam, you had a heyday against that defensive line. I believe that's the game that Isaiah Land had five sacks, which could only mean James Houston is prime for a huge day. So I think that Jackson State matches up very, very well with South Carolina State, but we're definitely going to have to see how that breaks down. My preview will be dropping next week for that game that is coming up very, very soon. But, guys, the vet was packed. The attendance was great. The crowd was great. There were some great posts and everything that I saw from the game. And so – Congratulations to Jackson State, your 2021 SWAC football champions, man. Coach Prom gets his first one on his resume. I'm sure he's going to look be looking to try to build that over the next few seasons. They've already landed a huge wide receiver transfer um, from Texas A&M and Indiana were his last two stops. So go check out CFL's podcast for all that latest information. He had a great episode on that. And, of course, guys, you already know, I can catch up with the latest uh, college football news and updates right here on the Blue Bloods, man, the only channel on YouTube that covers all levels of college football. And also, this Thursday, 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. Central Time, I have an interview with D. Anderson, Alabama A&M 
wide receiver, former LSU wide receiver, drop it on the channel, man. So make sure to tune into that as well. And I also got some other F F FCS players and potential FBS players lined up on the docket for the channel, man. Let's support the players, run the likes up and the views up on those, man. So we can get these players' names and you know their stories out there to everyone like that. But guys, hope y'all had a great weekend in the vet. If y'all went, but Jackson State your SWAC champions this year, guys. So make sure to tune in the rest of the week for all the latest college football content. But until next time, guys, the Blue Bloods are out.